This is a flying robot trying to kill you with a giant hammer and sickle. This is a Yeti eating communists. This is a UFO abducting FBI agents and feeding them to a wood chipper. This is Alien Hominid. Alien Hominid began life as a flash game on Newgrounds in 2002. Two years later, it's on the PlayStation 2 and GameCube, which is the version I am playing here. A flash game turned console game seemed like a big deal when this was released, at least to me. I had never heard of something like this happening before, and I thought it was really cool. Like the context behind its console release, the game itself is really cool. It's like Contra or Metal Slug, except with characters, stages, and animation straight out of a Saturday morning cartoon, if that cartoon happened to have lots of blood and gore. I don't know if the visuals are hand-drawn or not, but the game looks great. Every frame of animation is coded in detail, but the happenings on screen can reach a threshold of chaos, which negatively affects gameplay infrequently. But more on that in a bit. Alien Hominid is a pure 2D shooter, the kind that forgives not and pulls no punches. It's difficult, but a fair kind of difficult, which never crosses into frustration. It's an important distinction to make when measuring the quality of challenging video games like this. A great way to ruin any game, easy or hard, is with bad, unresponsive controls. Alien Hominid wants no part of that. We have jumping, we have shooting, and they are perfect. Our hero also has grenades at his disposal, quick slides to the left and right are assigned to the shoulder buttons. This technique can be useful in the game's excellent boss fights. You'll want to score a lot of points because more points equals more lives. You can score points in the typical ways, but you can also attain style points. Get these by biting the heads off of FBI agents or the other bad guys trying to kill the protagonist. Decapitating enemies is more than just the coolest thing you'll ever see. If other enemies see this happening, they become overwhelmed by shock and fear, thus momentarily rendering them incapable of attack, buying you precious moments so that you can move in for the kill. Just as you can rain death from above 1979 on these chumps, our friendly visitor from parts unknown can also dig underground and snack on humans from underneath. Don't stay down there too long, as the alien will suffocate after a while. Every dispatch method Alien Hominid offers is very stylish and very fun to watch, but it's all practical as well. Use all these techniques at the appropriate times and your continues and lives will remain preserved. Even if you don't use the more advanced methods of killing, shooting, and jumping still gets you pretty far. Pro-alien citizens provide plenty of power-ups to improve your projectiles. I like some power-ups better than others, but every one of them is an improvement over your default ammunition. Picking up an inferior power-up is one of the most annoying things in games that feature them. But Alien Hominid doesn't have this problem. A shield is packaged with every weapon upgrade, and it's good for one successful enemy attack on on the alien, so this gives you some room for error. The foundation of the game is packed with variety. The behemoth could have made a complete and satisfying experience if they limited themselves to all that excellent running and gunning, but they go further. Alien Hominid has a couple of space shooter levels. These can overstay their welcome slightly, but control similarly to the primary game mechanics. So you won't spend most of these levels losing lives as you figure out how to navigate things. Alien Hominid also has mini games. The best mini game is this PDA puzzle platformer thing. It's as tough, fun, and well-designed as the main game. The alien's thumb moves away from the PDA as your character moves towards it. This minor detail that has no purpose beyond the aesthetic is emblematic of the level of effort that was spent on making this great game. There's even a level editor here. In a mini game, that's some A plus effort. Most mini games are multiplayer, but there's another cool single player thing that has you flying USS our missiles into the great Satan. A few things keep Alien Hominid from achieving perfection. The biggest flaw is the hard-to-detect enemy fire. A lot of explosion animation is liable to happen at most moments within the main game. While common enemy projectiles do blink a bunch of different colors, it's still hard to see through all the chaos. This leads to some otherwise avoidable loss of lives. Most levels are thoughtfully designed with great bosses and plenty of surprises, but the beginning of the third locale is unusually mundane and 
and tedious. The pacing here is atypical of a game with rarely a dull moment prior, but this segment does end before any irritation takes hold. This is not the quest for you if you're looking for an easygoing game that inspires comfort with its easygoing difficulty. Alien Hominid is difficult, but more forgiving than a lot of other games which pride themselves on challenge. You are allotted a generous amount of lives and continues, and you're eligible to restart from the level of your choice once you reach it. The designers want you to see everything they've done, but at the same time, you want to get better at the game. You want to see how far you can get before your continues disappear. You will want to beat your high scores, all that stuff. That's how good Alien Hominid is. Maybe more of the world would have known this if its release date wasn't two weeks within Halo 2's. What could have been?